Good evening, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get tonight's meeting uh, started. It is Thursday, February 8, 2018, at 6 p.m. We'll do the Sacra Sacramento Metropolitan uh, Board meeting. Call this meeting to order. If we can start with the pledge to the flag. Director Wood, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Director Wood. The open session meeting is videotaped at Cablecast on Metro Cable 14, replay on Saturday, February 10th, 2018 at 12 noon, and Monday, February 12th, 2018 at 6 p.m. on Channel 14. Webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. The open session meeting also, or excuse me, are also available for viewing on the district's website at www.metrofire.ca.gov. Right now is an opportunity for members of the public to discuss matters on the, of inter, public interest on or not on the agenda. Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers? There are no speakers this evening. Thank you very much. Uh, just an item of note for an adjustment. There, on tonight's meeting, there was a presentation item. We have decided to move that and has been tabled to February 22nd. And uh, moving on, if we can, to the consent items. Do we have any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, I move uh, approval of the consent agenda. Second. Second. Madam Clerk. Director Gale. I pass. Gould. Aye. Orzali. Aye. Jones. Aye. Sheets. Aye. Wood. Aye. Clark. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Ann Barnes. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the reports of President's Board. I do not have anything at this evening, so we will move on to the Fire Chief's report. Chief Harms. Good morning, or good morning. Ooh. Good evening, <laughs> directors. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, a few things days. going on within the district. It's been a, a busy first month and a half. Uh, we've had some promotions. We had Fire Inspector Roman Keats, uh, who was a plans intake with us and uh, is become an Inspector 1. Uh, with him is a Fire Inspector 1, a new hire, uh, Vince Copy. They were... Uh, both started and both very excited about working in fire prevention. Uh, someone that if you've been around here for just a little bit is Cora Zelinsky. Uh, Cora used to be at the front desk and then promoted up into fire prevention and now has moved up into a plans intake specialist. Uh, I think for us here, we've seen her every morning around here. Uh, and even though she's promoted up, she'll be over at Citrus Heights or uh, Rancho Cordova, so we won't be able to see Cora quite as much. Eric Graven was promoted to captain. Uh, he was the last member on the captain's list. Uh, so we promoted, I believe it was 23 captains off of this list. Uh, we've sat down and had some, a lot of discussions and we'll run the next captain's process after the first of the year moving forward. And uh, Kevin Wagoner uh, is, was promoted to battalion chief and that's effective on the 10th. Uh, we also have a, a new office technician, uh, Kimberly McLeod Silva. She was a temper with us and then was able to move over to a new position there. Uh, a few reassignments you'll see is that uh, we came with you and talked about an EMS BC assigned to, to the day position. Uh, Brad Schumacher is in that position and Kevin uh, or Jeff uh, Malinowski is the new training captain and he is over there. 
Um, one thing just to follow up on uh, a little while, we came for you and asked about um, a program that uh, EMS had put together about taking EMTs out of the single role program and giving them a path to be able to go to paramedic school and that we would support them during that time. And for this first class, uh, I was happy to say is we've got four members that are in there. Uh, they just started their didactic portion of it and uh, that will be January through May. They'll go Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays uh, all day or until late in the afternoon. Uh, during the summer months, then, they'll do some uh, random shifts at the hospital for their clinical rotations. Uh, most of that will be kind of will work with their schedule, so it'll be off their schedule, so they won't take time off for that. Uh, and then their fall months, they'll be doing their field internship. So um, EMS was able to turn that, I think, around really quick and being able to put that out to the members and get four people into the class. And uh, I think that's a great project. Um, partnership we have with the with the community college there uh, again just a number of meetings going on uh, with uh, staff here and with labor uh, my ch myself and chief Shannon had an opportunity to go over to um, Salt Lake City and there was six fire districts the largest fire districts in the United States the only one uh, that was supposed to be there but wasn't there was Orange County and uh, we spent about uh, two days uh, with ourselves, with the chief and some staff from there, and just talking about uh, somewhat about the differences between a city and a district, but, you know, what are people doing? Uh, what things are going well? What are some of the struggles? Um, I'll have to say I go to a, a lot of conferences. That time that we spent together with people that have very similar um, districts or boards um, was very positive. Um, I do have to say one of them, I think, said they had 11 or 12 or 11 or 13 board members. So they're working through that. Um, <laughs> Mid-year budget meeting. Uh, we had our mid-year budget meeting and working with that, and, and the finance division is working forward. Um, I believe today, unfortunately I missed it, but they had their first cap-to-cap -cap meeting. Uh, hopefully a few of you were able to attend those. Uh, Chief Johnson is, is on that. And probably the most important thing of the report here is this weekend is Phil the Boot uh, for the Byrne Institute. Uh, to, or on Saturday from 9 to 10 is the Chief's Challenge. Uh, my fellow friend from Roseville has called me out on most social media right now. So any help on that side would be greatly appreciated. That ends my report, If you, unless you have any questions. Thank you, Chief Arms. Any questions or comments for the Chief? Right, thank you. Operations report, Chief Bridge. And his entourage. Oh, Three of them. Yeah. Big, big year last year. He's got his own security detail now. Uh, President Barnes, directors, Chief Arms, thank you. Um, choose a little different uh, format this time to present to you uh, what a year in review we did for 2017. Uh, as we Historically, in the, in the last several years, we've provided you with some statistics to let you know approximately how many runs and calls that were going on um, from board meeting to board meeting. Um, with, the, uh, with the assistance of our assistant chiefs who run the shifts, Chief Neville in charge of the C shift and Chief Neville is in charge of our B shift and Chief Quinn, who was unable to be here tonight, but he's in charge of our A shift, um, they were able to compile a lot of the historical data since what we did since last January all the way through New Year's Eve, just a, about a month ago. And then with the assistance from Community Relations, Captain Vestal, uh, they were able to put together, put the numbers to some um, video and some music. So with that, I'd like to be able to present to you a year in review from the Operations Division. Great. <clears throat>
So we have, uh, we were able to provide, I hope you enjoy that, thank you. Captain Vesper. Thank you. I thought it was well done. It's, I appreciated the work they did. I know everybody gets, I get tired of hearing my own voice, so I said the more videos you can do, the better. I just hit play. I'll come up and hit play. <laughs> We've also uh, provided you a stat sheet also, because I know the numbers fly by there, and um, it's hard to retain them all, but um, just wanted to take this time now to put it back to you, and uh, if you have any questions or any questions regarding what we did last year. Thank you, Chief Bridge. Any questions or comments? Uh, you know, I have a quick question. Just a clarification was, on the on the video. What was the number for? It looked like it was 798 deployed days, uh, or was that per person? Seven, 738, um, I believe, was the number here. Let me. Get yeah, to my it was sheet. a, a, a hundred, a seven hundred something. I was just curious, what, how, how was that calculated? Is that per person? Each yeah. day represents a person. No, not each person. So each unit. So a total of seven hundred. Unit. Yeah. So if we have um, wow. a strike team uh, that's gone for 14 days, there's 14. Then the other one went out for 10 days. There's, you know, 14, 10, 24. And if you add them all up, you get 738 days. That is an incredible amount, Chief. Yeah. We had a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, master mutual aid assistance throughout the state of California and across the country, Puerto Rico and Texas and uh, everywhere all over the wine country down to Santa Barbara. No, thank God I have uh, a great staff behind me that provides me stat sheets. Otherwise, uh, that's a lot of numbers from 20, 2017. So it was by far our busiest year and our busiest year um, on deployments as well. Thank you very much. Sorry, Any okay. other additional comments? Director yeah, Clark? Hopefully this year is, not a, is a lot calmer than last year because I tell you what, that was a, if, if I may say that, the, kind of the year from hell. Yeah, yeah it was. What it, in it? Planet. And I think also we, uh, and I'm going to give a, a moment here to Chief Wagaman to, to provide some additional um, information in terms of how, how busy we really are. Yeah. Um, but we, last year, we, it comes to prove that the, they used to say fires, they used the term fire season. Um, fire season is now year round. Yeah. It's been that way. And, and we're also finding that with Sacramento being such a vulnerable city with the, uh, re uh, with the levees and then the conditions that they're in, as old as they are, um, we're just finding the value of our Special Operations Division our, because in the event of one of those, and we had a leak last year, um, and then the Oroville, I mean, we're looking at uh, a, a huge potential here. And so uh, we had our helicopter up uh, most of the winter last year. So we're finding the, uh, the need to fly them more and more because they provide extreme, uh, the, the intel that they're able to provide us on the ground. Because when you're in a boat and you're trying to search an area without the eyes in the sky, it really delays that search process. But uh, Chief Wagman would provide some additional intel on the automatic aid stuff. Sure. Thank you, Chief. Uh, good evening, Directors, Assistant Chief uh, Wagaman, uh, B-Shift Operations. Uh, in addition to the numbers that uh, Chief Bridge provided you this evening, I actually have some additional numbers uh, that I uh, think that you might find interesting, and that's the uh, number of calls uh, that we provide service to other agencies uh, within our region. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2017, we provided automatic aid uh, to our regional partners uh, 14, I'm sorry, 16,507 times. And they reciprocated uh, that service to Metro's jurisdiction uh, 10,244 times. I can tell the, uh, the, the highest number is that uh, the service provided the city of Sacramento and that reciprocating number from the city of Sacramento back into Metro Fire. So we provided a service to the city of Sacramento 14,344 times last year and they provided the service back into Metro Fire um, 7,332 times. Thank you very much. You betcha. Appreciate it. Any additional questions? Uh, Mr. President, I have a question. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Dr. Gill. In the past that we had a tragedy in uh, Puerto Rico, which is a province of the United States, and the Virgin Islands had the same kind of thing. Did we give any support to the Virgin Islands, which is in the same vicinity, which is a part of these United States? Yes, uh, members of Metro Fire that are part of the uh, California Urban Search and Rescue Team, California Task Force 7, mm -hmm. they were deployed to uh, Puerto Rico to assist in those efforts. 
No. I said Virgin, the Virgin no. Islands. Not to the Virgin Islands, but we did. Do, right. We were deployed to Puerto Rico. Yeah, they are in the same vicinity and a uh, very stable con uh, area. And I was wondering, and they had the same kind of tragic there, and I saw nothing for the Virgin Islands. I can speak to that. I think, too, that in, in the way that the federal system works for the urban search and rescue teams, uh, when, when they call and we're up, we're, we have uh, – there's multiple teams throughout the entire country, and yeah. there's a rotation. Mm -hmm. So there was, they probably were provided service from an urban search and rescue at that point from another one of the teams, and whether it was on the East Coast or the South. Yeah, that's what I was wondering because yeah. I saw nothing because I got, as a matter of fact, some cl you know, calls to that yeah. effect. But yeah. I do know that when they call, we go. Of course. Mm -hmm. Well, you yeah. know, at a cost. It's yeah. not yeah. a free, you know. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Thank you very much. Director Kelly, do you have something? Uh, yeah. The video, um, you're not keeping that just for us and yourselves, are you? No. No, I, I, Captain Vestal, it, it passed on to me that we're going to be uh, posting this on our social yeah, media. Yeah. Already done. Posted on social media now. That's so, how quick he's so yeah, he's fast. Uh, yeah. Sent to yeah. news outlets. Yeah, he does a great job with sharing um, with with this type of information. Does a great job of sharing that where it needs to be shared. Thank you. Mm -hmm. be on YouTube, right? Probably YouTube too. <laughs> uh, it's on Facebook right now. It'll be linked on Instagram and Twitter as well. Oh, okay. very good. Thank Facebook, you. Instagram, Twitter. That's it. The only thing, oh, Snapchat. Snapchat. Yes, thanks, Chief, um, for that presentation. I just wanted to go back and have you reiterate the fact that in our mutual aid system currently, it looks as if in some instances we're doing a two to one. Right. In part of that, so that's our, our automatic aid system, I'm sure that's what you're referring to, us for the city. And yeah, so we do. We, we're fortunate with the size of our agency. We're the largest agency. We have the most apparatus, the most equipment. Um, we have the largest geographical area. So um, the amount of calls that are coming through the city, uh, their units are busy and they're running all those calls. And sure. uh, so it's just by the sheer nature of that, well, we're, we're going to. Yeah, and I, I think it's fight. important that the, the, the citizens of this region understand the role Metro plays in that. Yeah. That right. without that capability, there would be some calls that may be delayed in an answer. And right. so I think. Yes. Even though we have our, our, our border, we really are a regional asset that gets used, in some instances, two to one. Yeah. And that everybody really needs to get that, that I see here 101,000 calls. Yeah. You know, and, and, and part of that is our, the magnitude of our responsibilities that go beyond the incorporated area or unincorporated area of Sacramento. So I think that's really important for people to understand that, yeah. that we're providing services to cities yeah. that aren't within our jurisdiction, so to speak. Yeah. And, and that's an important piece of the puzzle when we talk about regionalization of assets and, and, and the role we play in, in, the, in the leadership mm -hmm. of the fire service in this area. I right. see that you got a whisper, so I'm going to listen yeah. to what that was. Yeah, and um, and I'll uh, we have another uh, example. I'll let Chief Neville share with you where we did providing service to the region. Yeah, I think that's what I wanted to hear just, too. Just one passing example. Recently, we provided uh, mutual aid on request to El Dorado County and to the El Dorado Irrigation District. They had an event that uh, severely impacted their infrastructure, their ability to provide water. They were at one point probably about 45 minutes away from losing their water source because of a young man that fell into one of their primary uh, feeders out of Slight Creek. So we were, we were part of that solution. Uh, El Dorado County doesn't have any confined space rescue folks that have the breadth or depth that, that we provide. So on a phone call, based upon relationships that we have, we were able to go up there and help be part of that solution for them. And they're, they're very thankful. And again, we reiterated that, that we are a regional asset uh, not only to the Sacramento area, El Dorado County, all the counties that we touch um, were called upon uh, not only for uh, expertise and service delivery, but then just to, to weigh in and give an opinion. So. Yeah. And that's a great example of, of the role Metro plays in the region. Uh, even though we're an independent special district with very defined borders, that's not reality. And so I appreciate that. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your work. Thank you, Thank you Director Gould. The only thing I have to add when you talk about the numbers, Captain Vestal, thank you for putting the actual photos, the training, the showing the deployments, not only regionally, but nationwide. Um, but when you talk about numbers, you just throw numbers, right? I'm glad CFO Thomas is not here to confirm my numbers. But on the busiest units, Engine 53, 4,686 calls, that's 12 a day. 
And if you got the medic 24 at 5,147, that's 14 calls a day. You got the busiest battalion at battalion 5, 46,645, that's 127 events a day. And then when you talk 101,000 total incidents for 2017, that's 277 events a day. So when you talk about the staff that we have, the great men and women, not only out in the field, but the one behind the scenes, I'm telling you, first class. And that video, thank you for putting that together because when people see that, that's the reality of what we do. It's not just the deployments, but it's the training so we're successful in those deployments. So thank you very much. Director Barnes. Yes, sir, Chief uh, Just to follow up on that, and it's one of those key things that, that you drew out of that, is that we look at somewhere between 3,000 and 3,500 calls is a, is a very functioning company. And by what I mean by that is that they have time to show up, they have time to train, uh, they take care of the equipment, clean the station, they have time to go out and do first due um, surveys of their first due. When you start getting up towards 3,500, now you start getting to four, towards 4,000. What they end up doing is they start eliminating stuff. And, and once you cross over 4,000 calls, pretty much they show up and, and they're going on calls every day out there. And so uh, we have stations at both end of them, but those are definitely ones through the operations we look at because that is just a really high volume. Uh, and then you look at that they're doing that on a 48-hour shift. So... They're, for 48 hours, they're going strong. No, agreed. And they can get back to the firehouse and turn right around and go right back out. So it's not like they get an hour or two to rest. Back. So, again, thank you. I guess it illustrates everything, the hard work that everybody does, not only on the front lines but behind the scenes. So thank you. There's nothing further. Move on to Firefighters Local 522. Vice President Trevor Jameson, thank you for being here. Good evening, directors, President Barnes, Chief Harms. Always a pleasure to be here representing the uh, fine members of 522. As you saw in the video, it was a great video. Also, as you said, the people behind the scenes that I represent as well. Um, I just want to get up here and tell you that a couple of things happened since the last time we talked. Uh, we had a labor management meeting, which uh, I think going on that labor management cooperation that you've been hearing from me, I've got to talk to most of you away from this uh, setting, which has uh, been very, I think, informative for both sides. Um, but our Labor Management Committee met. They meet once a month. We've identified about five different topics we like to go through, EMS, special operations, staffing, um, a few other ones, too. And we're, we're still kind of formulating how we want to do that. But the nice thing about that is it's where, where we can kind of sit down and get the best of both worlds from uh, administration and, and labor and uh, kind of make find solutions to, to problems that are kind of day-to-day -day that don't require maybe money or whatever, just other ways of thinking. So uh, it's, been very, uh, it's been very informative for our membership. We have a lot of our, of our shift reps. There's 14 shift reps. I think the last time we had about 11 of them show up. So it, it's well attended as well as from the administration side. So it's a, a lot of great dialogue. Also earlier tonight, uh, the policy uh, committee meeting was presented with the catastrophic leave uh, plan. I know it was this presentation item, but it's something that uh, a couple of our members, uh, Captain Brian Barthel and Captain Bryce Mitchell, have worked hard for for the last couple of years. And with the support of uh, Human Resources, Melissa Maddox, and uh, CFO Amanda Thomas, and Chief Harms, uh, it's a reality now. And uh, it's going to be a great plan for our, our folks. Um, really, really, pl really proud to be able to present that to you, a way to take care of people who a lot of them are the newer employees who don't have the leave built up, and we were, we've been looking for a way to take care of our new employees. So um, just, again, a real thrilled. Uh, the chief and I have talked. We're going to probably do a video uh, to help present that to our, our members. Um, also, and bring in the, uh, Captain Mitchell and Captain Barthel to, to talk and uh, let them know how important it is to the membership. And then finally, I just want to say uh, today we, we met uh, down at the courthouse and uh, appreciate everyone coming to the table. Uh, working together, um, I hope I think we're I think we're getting there. So I just want to say thank you for the dialogue. Uh, thank you for coming to the table with us, and I appreciate that. Unless you have any questions for me, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Are you happy with the contract? And the negotiation went smoothly. We didn't quite finish today. Today was a mediation uh, over a uh, a lawsuit. Then we did not get it finished yet. You're not probably going to arbitration, advisory, or I don't know. You can haven't we, got to that stage yet. Can we discuss this any further? I don't believe we can. So I appreciate yes, your comments. Can. It's the business of the public, and it's a okay. very valid question. I would I've default, done it many times. I, I thank you, but I'm going to defer to our uh, attorney, well, Mr. Larva. 
I really can't say that uh, a board member can't you know discuss the fact and existence of the lawsuit. Uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Trevor here represents the opposing side in the lawsuit, so from that standpoint, I wouldn't recommend a dialogue between the board on who else on one side of the lawsuit and uh, an individual on the other side of the lawsuit. Uh, there'll be a forum for. Uh, discussion of the kind of issues and to answer the kind of questions that Director Gale has posed, and that's why we have closed session um, requirements uh, and, and, and opportunities to handle those kinds of issues. I have been to many negotiations with F AFGE at both levels and some of the best lawyers around. That question was, how was it negotiated and going? That's very definitive. Well, and I believe you said I'm smoothly, not. then you asked if it was oh, moving to arbitration. Just a moment, please. Let me finish. Yes, sir. I've done it many times, AFGE. And that question was very valid. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, a lot of people run their mouth and talk and has no experience, nothing but yap, yap, yap. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for your comments. Of course. President Thank Barnes. you for the great job you're doing. Thank you, Director Gale. Director Gould, Get if back. you would. Trevor, I have a uh, I have a couple of things. When that um, catastrophic leave policy came before the policy committee tonight, I too uh, want to thank you and, and the members that really participated in all of that. It was a fine policy for all of those that are going to be impacted by it. I suggested a couple of ideas that I would really like you to circle back with Melissa and others uh, relative to the opt-in option that uh, down the road we may want to look at. But I was really impressed with the quality of the structure of the policy, and I'm grateful for the presentation. So I wanted to let you know that. Thank you for all your work, and thank the, the folks that were involved in its development. Thank you. Appreciate it. Very well said. Thank you. Any additional comments? Thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. Okay, moving on to committee and delegate reports. Executive committee, we did not meet and do not have a meeting at this point scheduled in the future. So moving on to communication center, JPA, Chief Johnson. Good evening, directors, Chief Arms. Comp Center JPA has not met since your last meeting. We meet uh, next February 27th, 9 a.m. in this quarter. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Johnson. Mm -hmm. California Fire Rescue Training, JPA, Chief Shannon. We have also not met since our last meeting. Our next meeting is uh, March 15th, 4 o'clock, next door at the SESC. Great. Thank you very much, sir. Finance and Audit Committee, Director Kelly. Uh, the audit committee uh, has not met since we last reported out. We will meet again on the 22nd, I believe it is. Something of the nature. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And policy committee, Director Gould. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This evening, the policy committee met and elected its new leadership. In addition to that, we heard as presentation items the catastrophic leave policy for represented and unrepresented folks. Uh, it was just a presentation item. Uh, but we did have some comments and some ideas uh, that we'd like to see in the future uh, integrated into that potentially, but really pleased with the quality of what came in front of us. And uh, we adjourn the meeting, and we are looking forward to scheduling another policy meeting sometime in the future. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Director Gould. Okay, before we go into closed session, we're going to go ahead and go on to board member comments and questions. Um, and as always said, we hopefully nobody's sitting out here when we come back. But if I'll start to my left, Director Kelly. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to uh, help the chief out tonight. So I will uh, <laughs> dig deep. <laughs> that, get that into the boot. Thank you, sir. You might want to run a pen over that and make sure you didn't it find it in the parking lot. We didn't, he didn't win last year. We need to help the guy out. No, agreed, agreed, agreed. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Do you take checks? No, I'm well, I'm just saying. All right, uh, moving on to Director Clark. You can take that, right. take care of that later. Yeah. Jeez. You can say you're on a, you can say you're on a fixed I'll, income. I'll there you go. <laughs> you could use the uh, square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any? any That's all I okay, have. thank you. <laughs> Director Wood. I uh, just want to say uh, to you, Director Barnes, thank you for the work you did with the Guns and Hoses. It was an absolutely outstanding event, uh, despite the, the game's outcome. Uh, it was a, a very good time. And, uh, Chief, I'll 
I have to take care of you. I'll be out volunteering for the Burn Institute uh, this Saturday, so I'll see you there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Director Wood. We're going to go move all the way to the right. Director Gale. Nothing in particular. I'll pass. Thank you, sir. Director Gould. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to... Uh, say thank you for the men and women and everyone that supports this organization as we see a 6% increase in our service volume uh, almost annually year over year we're sensitive to the impact that that has on everyone and uh, and hopefully in the 2018 rotation will continue to be uh, sharpened to that issue and uh, and focused on how we can implement policies that will help reduce some of the stress that that brings into the system uh, we get it. I think we get it. But thank you very much for all the work you all do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Director Gould. Director Rosali. I just wanted to uh, commend the staff for the report you made tonight. It, hearing the numbers is one thing. It is another thing to visually see examples of what the men and women do. It's greatly appreciated. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Director Rosali. Director Sheets. I wanted to congratulate Captain Graven and uh, Captain Malinowski um, and all the other uh, members that were promoted. Um, I'm excited for Fill the Boot. I'll be there Friday um, and we'll be walking and uh, we'll bring my family to donate uh, to you uh, on Saturday. Um, thank you for the year in review for the operations division. That was outstanding. Uh, in regards to closed session item number two, pending litigation, I'm going to recuse myself and at the clu uh, conclusion of that item, uh, we'll return for closed session uh, items one and three. Thank you, Director Sheets. Director Jones. Thank you. Uh, just ditto to all the positive comments that my fellow directors have made. And uh, I rest. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, everything's been said to fill the booth this weekend. Hopefully everybody gets out and supports Chief Harms. Uh, we had him come out here all the way from Phoenix, and we need to get him in first place so we can get some bragging rights. I'll find some cell phone jammers so your, your counterpart <laughs> in Roseville cannot post anything on uh, social media from now on. <laughs> uh, as you know, last weekend, or Director Wood said, Guns and Hose a football game. It was a great game. Um, I'm telling you, we raised lots of money for local charities. Most importantly, Firefighter Burn Institute is going to be a huge recipient of this. And uh, it's really exciting to see so many people come together. The firefighter personnel that sacrifice their time away from their home, their families that they already do on their shift, and they come out and play for a great cause to support local community events is absolutely humbling. So I appreciate everybody doing that. Again, uh, first-class organization, I've said that before from the video, the numbers that we talk about, all those numbers come with a price tag, and everybody behind the scenes that keeps making those phone calls to make sure that money comes back for reimbursement. We know it doesn't come back 100% match, but we still try. But again, at first-class organization, thank you for everybody involved. Uh, I, ex I get excited for 2018 and what we have to offer from that point. So on that, we're going to adjourn and go into closed session. Thank you. <laughs>